do they do differently? It seems like maybe they're working hard. Maybe they have more education. It's not. It's not. Because all of us are all the same. That's the reason is. We're all the same. It's just how effective you use God's gift to you. Let me prove this to you. This is right or wrong. Tell me if this is right or wrong. Uh, do we have a common problem? What is our common problem? Money. Anyone? You guys are here. What's our problem? Money. Okay. Money. So, tell, tell me, ask yourself this question if that is true or not. But Marlon, some people, those billionaires didn't have problem with money. Who told you? Well, the more they have, the more problem they have. Why? They're going to have a problem with tax, they're going to have a problem with state planning, charity, mm -hmm. like what they're going to be left behind for their family. You know, those problems, those who don't have money, they have problems because they don't have much. Money is a common problem to everyone. Why? Because we need it to provide for us. That's what we need, money. So how do you make money? You know how we make money? You solve problem. That's the only way to make money. So we all the same. You have common problem, and the solution is the same for everyone. You have to solve a problem to make money. It doesn't matter what is your work right now. You are solving problem. Is that true? Yes. When you go to school, when you graduate college. Thank you. When you graduate college, when you study university, what do you think they teach you? If you become an engineer, nurse, doctor, what do you think are they teaching you? To solve a problem. Is that right? And then you get paid solving problem. A business is solving problem. An artist is solving problem. That's how you make money. It's solving problem. So let's say, Let's say on a let's say a restaurant. Who makes more money, the owner or the general manager? I mean, when I talk about like let's say Tim Hortons franchise, right? Who's making more money, the franchise owner or the general manager? Franchise owner. Who solve more problem? The general manager or the franchise owner? <laughs> so you think like, oh the franchise or oh, the manager is solving problem. No. The general manager is hired to solve the owner problem. What is the owner problem? To serve the customer. To manage people. Supervise people. Is that right? So really that person is hired to solve the owner problem. It's only solving one problem, the owner's problem. The owner is the one solving those problems, but he hired people to solve those problems. So the owner are solving two basic problems. To serve his customer and to provide employment. So because he provides employment, he solved that people's problem. Now they have a job. So that's why they get paid more. So if you're an employee, and I'm sorry, but the income that you're going to earn is so limited because you only solve one problem, your employer's problem. But if you look at it, like, okay, so franchise owner versus the company, Tim Hortons, who makes more money? The company. Because they're providing businesses, so right, solving so many people's problems. So, but some people actually make money because they're very passionate. You know, they have passion. So, example of passion is this: a child loves to sing, very passionate on singing. When he was singing. Is he, is he or she thinking about making money? 
No. When you do something on Facebook or TikTok, when you post or do a video or something, are you thinking of making money? No. Big example, you know Kabi? From the TikTok guy? How much did he get paid in the last 12 months? How much did he get paid? Anyone knows how much Kabi made? No? You guys don't read news? What the worry? You see the news, you're going to be inspired. $20 million. Wow. It started only TikTok in 2020 when COVID happened. It just bored and they want to do something. And it did something and it solved people's problems. It's just video with no no words, nothing, it's just face expression, right? But today it's make, it made 20 million in the last 12 months. Wow. Imagine that. Is that his intention? I'm gonna make videos, I can make 20 million, 20 million three years from now. No, he never knew that, but he have passion. He have passion. That's what he does. An actor was very, let's say, as a child. I want to become a, an actor, an actress. Did they think about making millions of dollars? No. Maybe the mother, right? So, but I sport people. When you are a kid and playing sports, do you like, I'm going to become so good on this so I can make millions of dollars? No. It's all about passion. But then that passion solve problem. If you're a singer, you are entertainer. You are entertaining people. Same thing with with Kabi. People are just bored. So it's solving people's problems. Are you guys getting what I'm explaining here? So if you have passion to solve this problem, if you have passion there, you'll be surprised what you can do. So now, how do you do that? How can you make more? And why some make less? Is that important to know? Yes. I call this my best training ever. I did. Why? Because I've been training for the last 20 something years. I always teach what I know to other people. And this one is like, I have this, uh, when we have a boot camp in the house. Thank you very much for those who, and I, yeah, October, is October? Seven, eight. And I was like, I have this challenge every time there's a boot camp in the house. What will I train? <laughs> but that time I asked, why some people have more success than others? And that question led me to this. And then it's like, hmm, now I know what to train. So if you're gonna, if you're gonna follow what I'm gonna advise to you, especially a lot of you guys are young people here, you become so successful. You don't even need to go to school. How do I know? I didn't go to school, right? So this is how you become successful or not much success. We all are the same. We all are the same. We have gifts from God. So all you have to do is use God's gift effectively. Remember that. We have gifts. Let me see. This is true. So we have this gift and use it effectively. You're going to become extremely successful. Okay? Time. Are we all the same? Yes. Anyone have 25 hours a day here? Yes. No 25 hours a day. Everyone has 24 hours a day. No more, no less. Is that true? Yes. So the question is, how do you use your time effectively? How do you use your time effectively? For everyone here, I learned this, I practice this. If you improve yourself 1% a day, one person a day. You're gonna become 365 percent effective a year from now. You know what it translates? You can times 3.5 your income. That's why some makes 500,000, 5 million, 10, 50 million, 500 million. It's just how effective they are, especially with the time. So let's see here who's really effective here. 
do you invest 30 minutes of your time every day to do personal development? Reading, listening, or watching that it can improve your mind? Why you have to do that? Because you have this gift. Brain. And we are all the same. We're all the same. We all have brain. See, it's what you program to this brain. What you program? We're all born the same. When you are born, God gave you the same brain as anyone else. No one is born rich. No one. No one is born successful. No one is born, you know, like lucky or leader. Success. No one is born like that. Everything is about this brain that you have to program. So whatever you program this brain, that's what you're going to have as an outcome. So let me see if this is true. I learned this so many years ago with Anton Robbins. If a child, a baby from China, is adopted by an American couple, and this couple is from Texas, when that baby becomes a young adult, that he or she speak to with Chinese? No. no. That, you're going to talk to this person, 100% of Chinese, but speak English fluently with a Texas accent. <laughs> Is it true? Yes. So, why I use this example? Because to prove to you that we are all the same. It's what you program in the brain. So, but the challenge is, your environment, since you are like, you know, if, if you have a child, if you have a, have a baby before they went to kinder, you'll be surprised. From the time they start walking to going to kinder, they have no fear. Did you notice that? And they will try everything. They're always curious, they're always intrigued. Is that right? Yes. They will explore. I mean, my grandson will go to, to a couch and he will just jump. Like, if I'm there, he's like, gonna go out there, jump. It's like, but even thinking if I'm gonna catch him or not. I just gonna jump. Because for him, it's like, just wanna have fun. I'm not thinking if it's going to pull, like, I cannot catch or not. It's just how, how kids are. But the minute we become kinder, elementary, high school, guess what? Suddenly, we are programmed to limit our mind. You know, you want to become successful? Learn what you learn from kinder. Humility is taught when we're a child. It's taught. Humility is really simple. Say, please. Thank you. Sorry. That's humility. If you just practice that in your life, you're gonna live a good life. You're gonna be people gonna like you. You know, if you are have children and you made a mistake, say sorry to your kids. If you don't say sorry to your kids, you're teaching them not to say sorry when they make mistake. See, the brain is so powerful. So whatever programming we have, right? And tell me if this is true. As parents, we have good intention to our children. That's why we want them to go to university. They want to have a, we want them to have a nice degree. Is that right? So they can have a better life than us. Is that our programming? That's our mind, right? Now my question to you is this. Do you have a degree? If you have a degree, and you tell your kids to have a degree so they can have a better life, think again. Are you sure that's the only answer? Because if you have a degree, and probably you're going to have a very good job, and you want your kids to have a very good job so they can have a better life, well, are you just repeating the cycle? You know, when, they, when your kids are married, and they have kids, how much time do they have with their kids? You see your kids double job, triple job, how do you feel? You know, they work separately, sorry to say, 50% of marriage in Canada and up in divorce. And what's the main reason? They met someone? No. Money. Money. They both have to work because they both need to provide. 
Is that right? Mm -hmm. So if you can say in best for your children where they're very little, you know, especially this IRP like that, by the time they become 30, 35, they have more choices in life. Mm -hmm. But when you graduate and we have debt and things like that, we have no choice. We become slaves to our debt. That's even biblical. So the brain, the time. Let's see if you invest time wisely. We all have 20 hours a day. How many people you connect to every day? Do you call five people every day? Connect to them. But really, like be honest to yourself. Everyone will set goals and oh, I want to make 100,000. Oh, I want to become successful. Okay, everyone can do that. But you have to invest your time effectively. You don't need to do this eight hours a day. I don't think you should do this full time. I'm a full time husband. That's what I do. I spend more time with my family. I spend more time with my wife. 24 7 we're together. 24 7. <laughs> it's, a dream. it's a dream come true. That's my dream when I was young. I'm kind of wondering, what is that? Because of money problem. Why? Because my mom, when she was, uh, when I was nine years old, my mom went to Hong Kong. You know, walk, walk, going to Hong Kong, you see your parents, your mom, dad, Saudi Arabia, two years, and then they come a month to see them, and they go back again. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. And then you ask your question, why are you leaving? Why are you leaving us? You know what? Because money. Is that true? Yes. So to me, when, when I was young, I already promised myself, when I get married, I might not be with my wife all the time. Because to me, like being in a separate place is separation. I don't like that. So it's a dream come true. Unfortunately, my wife is like that because when her, when her, her, her mom passed away when she was uh, eight years old, or dad, sorry. Dad passed away when she was eight years old. She was eight years old. Imagine that. She's the youngest out of ten kids. And mom didn't work. So she's always with her husband. She's have a, a tailoring shop inside the house. And then suddenly he just he have a heart attack and pass away. See, my, my, my wife, eight years old, when she worked, around 18 years old, when she worked at Philippine Plaza Hotel, she saved her money because she have a goal. You know what's her goal since she was a, a kid? To have a toilet in the house. To have a toilet. Imagine that you're 10 and you don't have a toilet. If you go to their house, you're not going to see a toilet. They go to this place, they do their thing there. Like, no toilet bowl. So you, you see like, oh, they're successful. No, it's not like that. You see the roots now, but you didn't see the roots. This is the roots. Why do you think we are like this? Because we don't want others to experience the hardship we experience. Especially the children of today, when they become young adults tomorrow. See, it's very important to have this. But at the same time, it's more important to have this. Your heart. Is that right? Sometimes I put S U R T. So remember, I'm not the best use of using letters, but the heart. Very important. See, if you think about business, that's the brain. But if you think about the purpose of the business, that's the heart. That's the heart. So when you think about IRP, what do you see? Heart, heart. If, if you only see a big commission, that's the heart. <laughs> but, that's the brain. Oh, that's the brain. <laughs> <laughs> but if you see the future today, if something happens to, their, to them, the family, the children will not struggle financially. That's the heart. If you see that when they retire, they're not a burden to the society, to their children, that's the heart. If you see that when they pass away, they can give a financial legacy to their grandchildren, that's the heart. That's not the brain. 
you're doing it because you want to serve. If you're gonna do it just to make money, then that's the brain. And your result will be limited. Very limited. You know, if you don't invest the time wisely, effectively, just 30 minutes a day of calling, you you will be so different. You know, the result will be massively different. I remember when the first time I, when Marlo was a new advisor. Marlo, new advisor. And then, he was like in the office, first person to come, he arrived early, first person to leave, last person to leave. And I was like, notice like, first I noticed like, initially she, she had problem with him. And then over time it's just, just him. And then we start talking. You know, we start talking and he said that somehow the business is down and he asked me what to do. My, I have a simple advice with him. Just call five or more people a day. That's all you need. Just every day consistently. But instead of five, he called 15, 20, 30 people a day. So he did. In three months, his business changed. That year, he gave me 300,000 a year. That year, they made $300,000. Because of really investing the time effectively. Because what do you do every day? It's okay to watch YouTube. It's okay to watch YouTube. But what's something that can improve your brain? And what's something that can touch your heart? There, you look at it like it's a tool. It could be destructive or can be used as effective. It's up to you. But you have to be effective by using God's gift. You know, you look at you look at Pizra, right? You look at Pizra. The first time you read that article, I don't know if you use your mouth. <laughs> like what the? F <laughs> That's not effectively using it. <laughs> the first time I saw that, it is like okay. The brain is like. This is not right. <coughs> but the heart is like, we're doing right for people, we know what's right. You know, I was asked, do you worry? If you know the truth, would you worry? No. You're not going to worry if you know the truth. Yeah. We keep hearing this, find something you believe in, is right? Yeah. But please, if you find something you believe in, make sure what you believe in is right. Because sometimes you believe in something that's technically not right and it's going to be a challenge. So use your mouth effectively. When you're presenting, I'm very simple of using the mouth effectively. It's really simple. The words coming from the mouth, right? What's the difference between five hundred thousand dollars and half million dollars? What's the difference? Which one is more effective, five hundred thousand or half million dollars? So use your mouth effectively. The words are going to come out, make it effective. So what else can you use effectively? Like we're all the same. So far, we only have one mouth, right? <laughs> Anyone? So have one mouth. Do you have ears? Yes. Why do you think God made it this way? You know what it said? Talk less, listen more. Talk less, listen more. How about eyes? Do you have eyes? Yes. How many do you have? Two. <laughs> but are we all the same? Are you getting it? We are all the same. God gave us the same gift. No one must receive more. Is that true? Most of the time. So, eyes, mouth, ears, eyes. How about nose? Yes. Wow. Really? Can you use this effectively? Yes. Let's see if you can use your nose effectively. You went to the mall or some place and you smell something good. Person 
smell good. This is good if you are female, but for men, I don't know. <laughs> this lady smells good. So, you're using your nose, right? And then you use your mouth. Wow, I love the smell. What is your perfume? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, pure female is work good for female and female. For guy, guys, that's not good. <laughs> So, you know, you ask question. Oh, that's really good. That's oh, that's not so good. So, basically, you know, you have to use the nose to start, the mouth to start conversation, but use the mouth effectively. You don't know that person, right? You don't know that person. Then you ask, where do you live here? How long have you been in Canada, immigrants? How long have you been in Canada? Is your family here with you? How many kids do you have? How old are they? Like, you know, you have to be interested with people for people to be interested in you. Like if you think that, oh, I have a title, I'm a licensed advisor, even to become CFP or higher than that, it's the same. It's about relationship with people. Title is not gonna make you successful. It's how you treat people may make you successful. So you 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 use that. No, you use the mouth. You are effective on connecting, and you're effective on listening. How do you become effective on listening? No, when they ask you, when you ask them a question and they answer. How many kids do you have? And they answer three. How many boys? How many girls? All boys or girls? You're listening. Yes. Right? How are they? You're listening. So create a question from the answer they give you. That is, you are interested with them. Now this is not effective use. Not effective use. Okay? Would you like to make money? <laughs> hey, can I have an appointment with you? I'm going to show you something. Like you just met the person and you already tried for appointment. You know, time, we're all the same. You have to invest time to build a relationship. It's not right away you want an appointment. It doesn't work like that. If you find people who want to make money really quickly, that's going to be probably a sign. All they want is money, I would say be careful with that. As that's that's the brain talking, not the heart. So then uh, then we have this gift. Are we sure that we have two hands? Right? Use it effectively. So you have this good connection, you talk to them, you connect to them, amazing, right? But you did not use your hand. How do you use your hand? Hey, can, can I have your cell phone number? Maybe we can... I'll, I'll text you. Or can I have your number? Maybe we can we can uh, talk again or have lunch or something. So if you don't use this hand, you, know, you use it effectively, but then what's the result? Use this effectively. That's good, right? Then you have the phone number. That's good. But you should effectively. Text. After a day or a few hours. Hey, I just want to say, nice meeting you. You know, it's a, it's nice talking to someone like you. Like, say something nice. I really love your perfume. <laughs> <laughs> like, really, connect. You know, Lavina? Lavina is so amazing. If you listen to the Venus and ways to connect the people, yeah. you look so gorgeous. You're so beautiful. <laughs> like this is a female. If you met someone, doesn't matter what they are, they're gonna find something good with them. Yes. You are sharp. You know, you, you look so successful already. You are successful, right? Like she's really good at connecting to people. Like she used what God gave to her effectively. I said, Oh Marlon, I'm shy. Everything can be learned. 
everything can be learned. All you have to do is invest time to practice. Every, 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 invest time to practice. How about this one? About you have a you have feet, right? So you have feet. How many do you have? Two. Two. Let's see if you can use effectively. You want to go party or store, you look at someone, you smile, first you smile, come here, come here, come here, come here. Are they going to come to you? <laughs> you should be, hey, I, I was, uh, how long have you been here? Are you, are you from Philippines too? If you are Filipino, right? You have to connect. You know, they, they, to me, I've seen my wife do this so many times. It's like when I say, when she say, where are you from Philippines? She always asks, where are you from Philippines? How long have you been here? Is your family kids here? How many kids do you have? I just keep hearing that she's just genuinely interested in people. You know how good she is with people? When Mark has, my, my son has christening, 2000, 2000, um, uh, year 2000. Uh, 2000, 2001, 2000, right? Late, late 2000. We have more than 300 guests. And I'm a very shy person. My wife is not. <laughs> Wherever we go, she will talk to people. She can get, and before, there's no cell phone like this. Like, she has to write everything on the minders. Like, they have the contact list at the back there. Like, I ask, like, what's the phone number of this person? Or our friend, like, she knows exactly the phone number. <laughs> but then this thing make it not sharp anymore. <laughs> because now you have to look at everything here, right? So it's like 300, more than 300 guests on this christening. And even me, it's like, do we really have that much people that we know? But she, she connects with people. If she if go to the mall, I, I remember I've done job, right? But when we go out, when we go out, when she, when she see people at the church or mall or store, she will have conversation, but she always gonna ask for the phone number, and then she gonna call them back. Call them back. Just friends. We're not in the business yet at the time. I was working double job. But then when we become a realtor, you know, she knows the people who don't own a house and don't own a, a, a renting or owning a house, she knows. And then she can create conversation. When I become a financial advisor, guess what? The reason I become an advisor, because first, I like that book, that second level, that's what I want you to know. Second is like, when we are as a prospect list to fill up, she put more than 300 names. <laughs> we were asked 100 names, and she put more than 300 names. I was like, we're in. We can do this thing. <laughs> See, I know this long time ago, it's not who you know, it's who they know. That so means like more than 300 people, they know people too. Right, so that's how we, we started the business in 2004. So, how do you use this effectively? Like, are you sure that using the brain is to have a nice degree? Well, let's see if that's true, okay? We have two young person here, okay? Can I have an example of young yeah. persons just to, like really, like, like yeah. 80s, 18, 20. Anyone? Okay. Can 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 you can volunteer? Come here. Yes, just two of you. Come here. Okay. What's your name? Ken. Okay, Ken. Okay. And huh? Honey. Okay, honey. Ken. Okay. So see, see this one. Okay. <laughs> Ken. So let's say, honey, after high school, she study in university right away. They're good friends. She study university right away. And after four years, he graduated, right? So you have a nice job after that and everything. But Ken, he became financial advisor first for the first two years. You know, attending training, learning about finance, learning about strategy, taxation, you know, dealing with people, how to become a better person, how to have good philosophy in life. So after two years, he went back to university. So he's behind two years, right? Behind two years. So he graduated. By the time he graduated, this already two years ahead. Is that true? After 10 years, who do you think is financially better? <laughs> After 20 years? <laughs> so it's statistically proven, you know, 67% will be financially weak. Is that right? If Ken Foundation is only the degree, you know what he targeted? He targeted the fruits right away. 
But he learned finance, he had the roots. Like they have the foundation. So he can build better financial, you know, financial house because he learned first about finance. The sad part is this, when they go to university, will they teach that in school about finance education? They don't. So it's nothing wrong if you say, oh, I'm gonna do this first, you know. Even just minimum learn about finance, now you know what to do. Just the understanding what's the mortgage, uh, what house to live, what house to rent, you'll be surprised what it can do to you. Mortgage retirement strategy, simple strategy that he will not know. And this is the thing. Someday there's opportunity gonna show up, but he have a nice degree. What would he say with that opportunity? No. You know why? Because he's thinking he's got something to lose. He got something because he's have a degree, a diploma, that's his training. But he started first, you know, to learn to be entrepreneur and finance and everything. He understand passive income, cash flow and everything. And then after 10 years, somebody showed him an opportunity. And he looked at his numbers like, this makes sense. He can walk away with his career degree because he knows he can do it based on his foundation. Is that right? So it doesn't mean that someone stops school that's the end of their, like, they're not gonna become successful. I heard that so many times, oh, this person's gonna become successful. And the belief is every time I go, it's all, when I met people, it's like, oh, my kids, are, my son finished like, engineering, degree, nursing, accountant, mm -hmm. I heard that so many times. And then I asked, where do they work? Mm -hmm. Oh, at call center. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just telling the truth, right? Mm -hmm. So, guys, when you see young people here, like them, please pray for them to be guided <laughs> properly. And I really, really hope that you guys use God's gift effectively. Yes. Because really, you will change it. You are the future of this country. We all know say that you, you are the future of the country. Don't become a burden, become a burden. <laughs> contribute, to the, contribute to this country, not to become beneficiary only. <laughs> contribute. Thank you very much, Ken. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. back home, they compare them, it's like, it, it's, it killed their self-esteem. It's, it's not good. Everyone is unique, their own way. We're not, it's not the same anymore. And biblically, it's actually even in the Bible, Romans 12, verse 2. You know, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. By the renewing of your mind, you can test and approve the will of God. It's good, this is perfect will. So time change, right? So how do you use this, though? Uh, let's say the situation with this one. Let's see. Okay? How do you use your brain effectively? Remember, our philosophy is try to say the good and everything? So, what's the good thing that can come out because of this? 
Like, don't think like you're a victim. Yes, others people thought that there's a spare. It's like targeted. Like, I don't see it that way. I see it as a great opportunity to improve, to actually the standard in the industry. That's how I see it. It was like, wow, thank you very much, Pisa. Now we know where to improve. I'm grateful, actually. To Pisa, our lawyer don't want to say that. I gotta like, don't say that in front of them. <laughs> but even send them a letter saying, hey, thank you very much, I'm grateful. No. Because everything you, you put in there, they use it against you. They can put things out of court. See, he admitted. He admitted that we are right. So they can put it in a different context, right? So, but yeah, that's, that's the thing. Like, I, I look at it like, wow, this is amazing. When, when this is a good learning, we can improve, we can become better. Advisors will do their business professionally, not just salesmanship, right? And because of that, because of that, this is the heart. This is their FTC, FTC guideline, now FNA. I understand that, you know, you know, last year, you know, as our average base amount we have last year, $375,000. This year, $375,000. The average base amount per policy, $375,000. That's already big in the industry. This year, $460,000. This amount. And I would love to see in 2020, next year, I would love to see that our average space amount is around $800,000. You know why? Because that is the heart. That is the heart. It's, it's not, life insurance is not about to become rich. No, not even come close to that. It's really about the family that's left behind. Like the love of the parents, the breadwinner, who is still gonna be there. You know, the love. And you don't want the skin to be, that kids to go to any, what do you call this? Orphanage or foster uh, home. Foster home. You don't want that. Sorry to say, sometimes you said, oh, this person died and decided the wife married right away. <coughs> like, what's the meaning of that for most people? The husband died and one year, two years, the wife is married again. They need someone to take care of them. They need someone to take care of them? Financially, emotionally, or which one? All together. Possibly both. both. Yes, maybe, right? But there's also a few who take good care of their kids first, sacrifice for their family. Is that right? Yes. So, would you agree that maybe a million dollar protection, you know, instead of like, Focusing to find out someone, focusing to take care of the kids first. Yeah. So it's really about that. It's about the, the heart. If you do it like that, if you think it like that, you'll be surprised. If you're effective to using this, you'll be amazed how this will work to you. Um, when you uh, how many of you really imagine you no know, when you die? Who will cry? You know what, man? Who will cry when you die? It's actually a part of the book. From Robin Sharma. It's really understanding life purpose. It's not about the brain, talk about that. It's about the heart. What is your purpose in this planet? That you made the difference to people's lives. When you die and your family is crying, that's very normal, but it's only then, you need to say you only made the difference in their life. But that's it. You didn't make so some, some much difference with other people's lives. And that's, if that's what your purpose, that's okay. But we're in Canada, all of us, most of us are, almost all of us are immigrant here. Are you sure we come here to just, you know, just to work hard and hopefully someday, hopefully, we're okay? Who really migrate here just because they just wanna see the snow? 
Well, we might be most of the time because we want to better life for our families, right? How about your kids? How about your grandkids? Did you ever imagine their future? Sometimes we have this meaning about money, like money, money, money. It's not about the money, it's about what money can do. <coughs> you know, I, I, uh, I, I, really would, I really see this. This is why I say, someday, most people in this country will balance with better. The reason is because we're planting seeds today. Planting seeds. Not only for us, but for our kids. I have grandkids now, four of them. And my wife have uh, uh, a lot of nephew and nieces that also have kids here now. Same thing with my, my, my son, only one, right? Oh, nephew's nieces. Um, but we care about those kids, like those babies, and then they're like one to three years old. Every single one on our family have IRP. Every single one. Why? Because we plant the seed now. So that way when they turn 30, 35, 40 years old, they have more choices in life. And that's why we're very excited about the future. Very excited. And hopefully do the same thing. So how do you really, on, on what you do as an advisor, how can you be more effective with the heart, or with the mouth, ears, eyes, nose, hands, feet? Remember, the key word here is effective. How do you use this effectively? Let's see. You went out, mall, school, or anywhere. You look at someone, they're not interested. <laughs> Just look. And the outside appearance, but I understand the brain is like, oh, I don't think they're going to be interested. The more they judge. Right? You look at that, you go to a clinic, you talk to your, your doctor. Oh, he's not going to be interested. He's already a doctor. But oh, right away, you, you use the eyes, but then the brain is like... But how do you know if they're not going to be interested? How do you know? Unless you use your mouth effectively. Hey Doc, I was wondering if you have time uh, tomorrow. Why? I want to show you something. I think uh, something that you know can, can help your practice better. Like, what does it got to do? Are you a doctor? <laughs> you know, most, most people are successful. They are willing to listen. And some people have ego, but not all. Most people are humble people, actually, especially successful people. It's okay to talk to them and share them your ideas. You know, I want to show you something, and, and, and also, at the same time, I want you to share this and let me know if this is something that's going to be good. So, ask someone. You know, how many doctors or, uh, doctors and nurses are tired in their profession? Tired. Is that true? Burn out. <coughs> are you sure they're not looking? Are you sure they're not interested in hearing some opportunity? Well, if you... Use the eyes and then use the brain ineffectively, you're always going to judge someone. Always going to judge someone. If you see me, if you see me 20 years ago, you're not going to approach me. Like this shy person, like, what, what's my chance? If you see me before, like I'm very shy speaking in front of people. I even hide. When we have visitors, they have, I hide. My wife is like, why don't you go out there? Why are you staying here? I'm shy. Go out there. That's me. But then I, 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 I found my passion, and I want to be in front of people. And my passion is actually, I inherited with my mom. She was a teacher before she went to Hong Kong. But grade one, grade two, grade three, after my school, I ran to her, I, I, I ran to her class. She was teaching grade six. I was sitting at the back and looking at my mom, racing, talking, and I see, you know, that's her happiness. Her most happiest I've seen her is when she was teaching. And then she went to Hong Kong. And a lot of things changed after that. That, I, that, that happiness, that's it's different when she was a teacher before. And I never did it like that before. 
I just really noticed this, especially when my mom passed away, that technically I inherited her passion, teaching. I love teaching. I love doing this. You know how I love doing this so much? That I uh, let you stay here at 11 o'clock now. <laughs> <laughs> And um, really, it's, it's look, look at that. If you if you attend the boot camp in our house at the four a.m., now I'm wondering, is that effective use of time? Like four a.m., five a.m., you're still learning. It's how you see it. But to me, it's like I want to see who's willing to pay the price, like who have the passion to learn. There's no schedule on learning. It could be any time. What do you want? What do you want? Do you know what you want? The question is this, what are you willing to pay to get what you want? It's not free. Nothing in life is free. That's the truth about it. Somewhere, somehow you have to create something to get something. Is that right? Yeah. Like, oh, man, money is a, money is not going to make you rich. Uh, money is not going to make you happy. Have you heard that term before? Yes. Are you sure? Money can lead to happiness if you use the money properly. See, the thing is this. Example of happiness is this. Charity. Charity. When you give, how do you feel? Happy. Oh, happy. So, to me, the, the more you give, the more happiness you receive. If you look at the more you give, the more you receive, that's the brain. The more you give, the more you receive, that's the brain. The more you give, the more happiness you receive, that's the heart. Like you're giving because you love giving. It makes you happy to give. So in front of a client, give with happiness. Don't expect commission. Don't think commission. Don't think recruit. No, you just give with happiness. No expectation, anything in return. Just put your heart into what you do. Of course, you're going to use the brain also. That's why there's training and, you know, effectively doing the presentation or the illustration. But it's up to be the heart first. If you do that, you'll be so... You know how powerful anyway the brain and the heart? Which one is more important, the brain or the heart? The heart. You know why? You can always get this brain dead, still alive. Is that right? Have you ever seen a heart dead? <laughs> really? Like, like you, you see that medical term, brain dead, but heart dead is passive, right? So, let's see if you're using this effectively in front of a client. Let's see. Okay? When you go to a client house, what do you use first? Of course, your feet. You went there, right? <laughs> But the eyes. Yes. Look for something you can say something nice. You go to the house, look for something. The picture, the flat plants, the brightness of the house, maybe the color of the house, or the, the table. But look for something that you can use your mouth effectively to really say something nice. Do not go there. It's like, you know, I have an appointment. Uh, can we go to your kitchen table? I have to present now. <laughs> That's not effective. It takes time to build a relationship. Especially if you're CFT. That's why you can build rapport. That takes time. You know, build rapport. Five minutes, ten minutes. You know, it, it's, it's, that's how it is. If, if you think like presentation is the way, uh, relationship first. Before presentation. So, you should mount effectively. You can build rapport. How long have you been living in this house? Is your kids with you? Uh, how many kids do you have? How old are they? Like you connect. If you are CFT, you have to like prospecting all the time. Like the person appointment, effectively, before the appointment, you should know them. You should know them. You should ask the, the one who gave you the appointment. Oh, you, that, that friend that you're gonna go to, Around how old, are, how old are they? Are they married? Do they have children? How many children do they have? How long have they been in Canada? You have to, you know, use them out effectively. Oh yeah, well, okay, so we'll see you there tomorrow. <laughs> but 
Is that effective? No, you should not effectively give you appointment, you agree with the appointment, the time is okay, but you need to know that appointment before you go to that appointment. So that way, imagine your surprise. You went to the appointment, how did you been in Canada? I just arrived two weeks ago. Oh, you're, you're, no matter what you do, you cannot close because you did, you can adjust your presentation. But if you know that two weeks ago, that's okay. You can ask questions. Oh, they're new to God. Oh, that's good. Uh, what is their job? Do you have an idea what's their job back home? So you can connect. You can you can know what to do. It's okay to they're, they're new in Canada. The minute you present, you know, RSP. Will they know RSP? <laughs> TFSA. Will they have an idea with TFSA? They're new. But if you mention pension, like back home, you know, there's pension back home, like it's like this. So now it can connect because they're new. But if you don't know the information, RSP is like, it's not gonna connect. You're talking, to, you keep talking, like the person talking to is like, you forgot to ask how long they've been in Canada, it's like. <laughs> but they're lost because you did not use your mouth effectively by asking the right question before you go to that appointment. You know, and please, use this effectively. Before you go to the appointment, you should practice. Practice, practice, practice. Takes time. Invest time effectively. Do not just go there because you have an appointment. If you know the age, approximate age, approximately, then you can practice. What if they say 200 a month? What if they say 300 a month? What if they say 400 a month? Like, then you can practice. It's really a approximately 35 years old. What, what if they're 37? What if they're 40? What if they're 33? You practice that. You use your hand effectively. And you use the time effectively. Are you guys learning anyway? Yes. yes. You know, are you sure there's a secret? There's none. That's not a secret. This is all God's gift. All the same for everyone. Is that true? Yes. The same for everyone. But the difference between success and not much success is the way you use it effectively. The way you use it effectively. Anyone here gonna have one like why you don't close a lot? The reason is because you're not using it effectively. Like the, the minute you go to that house, how do you use it effectively? Let's just say you sit down. Okay, this is the dining table. <coughs> this is the dining table. Where do you sit? If this is where the, 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 the father sit, I will always sit here. Of course, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to kick him out. Like, hey, can you sit, move there? He'll be next to me. When we go to the kitchen table or dining table, you know, I typically put my jacket where I know where the father sit. Why? Because I'm going to position myself to make him uncomfortable. Why do I do that intentionally? The reason I do it intentionally because if he is comfortable here, he controls the conversation. Because he is the father of the house. If he sits here and I'm here, this guy is really upset. Really, not saying it, but I just can see it. He just like sit like this. So, and that's okay with me. Because when he's uncomfortable, he is growing. He is going to learn. But if he's sitting there, ego will kick in. And part of the house, and this on this house, things like that, you know? Here. But that's why intentionally I do that. But I ask for permission. Is it okay I sit here? So I can really explain it, and it's okay that you, you, both of you sit there, like this. I position it properly. You know what? My wife is not actually doing to me. Can my husband see it, sit here? <laughs> so, simple, right? Really, like, why is that? Effectively, okay? So, sit there. Look, use your eyes effectively. You open your laptop, you open the insure the time plan. Right? There. When you open that laptop and you have that screen, you're sitting there, you know, use your eyes. What is the body language? Okay, what do you see? When you open that insure the time plan, use your eyes effectively. 
where are they looking? Like, no one really, out loud, insure the tam tam tam, what is it, insurance? <laughs> no one told me that ever. So, watch, watch them both, especially the husband, because most of the time, you know, the husband can influence the decision, actually. And this is what I will try to see. Are they reading what's on the screen? Insure the retirement plan. So then they're like, what is insure the retirement plan? Is this insurance? So they create question in their mind. And they are intrigued. And when they're intrigued and they have question, then they can learn. They can learn. So really simple thing to use God's gift effectively, right? So you ask the question, would you like to save money? What do you do? Listen. Who answered yes? When, with enthusiasm. Typically who? The wife. The husband? No reaction. Do you agree? Most of the time, no reaction, it's just like that. And that's okay. Now I know who's more enthusiasm, the wife. So I'm going to focus my question to the wife. Not to him, but basically looking at him, asking questions, but I know she's going to answer my questions. Right? So, but the thing is this, I'm not there to sell. I'm not there to sell. I'm just there to educate, to share information that I know that helped me and my family, that's my message to them. But I started typically, you know what, uh, thank you very much for letting us uh, be in your house and show this to you, your friend here, just interested to show this to you. It helped him, it helped me and my family. Uh, maybe it could also help you and your family. We just wanna share this to you. So that's typically how I start my presentation and then I just have some question, would you like to save money? So I'll wait and typically it's like, yes, the husband, <laughs> most of the time, most of the time. But because of the presence of the sign, it's like asking questions. The questions must be asked effectively, effectively. You know, example of effectively is uh, rule of 72, how money works. Here, let's say you have $10,000 and you get paid 4%. 72 divided by 18, money double, for money double every 18 years. If you are, if you have 10,000 today, after 18 years you're gonna have 20,000, another 18 years you're gonna have 40,000. Is that effective? If you're doing it like that, I'm gonna close marks. Why? Because you are talking, they're using their ear. See, you can, talk and they will listen. At the same time, it goes out on the other side. Why? Because you didn't ask the question. So, 72 divided by four, how many years your money double? Use your hand, the finger. Ask the question, lead them with the answer. That's how you do it effectively in the field. So, 72 divided by, you know, money double every 72 years. So at 4%, 72 divided by 4, how many is your money double? When I do a BPM, like group BPM, I actually go to the screen and, and, and how many, 72 divided by 4, how many is your money double? Everyone answered, everyone. So let's say today you have $10,000. You know, after 18 years, how much do you have? How much do you want to grow? 20. 20. Do the answer? Yes. Another 18 years, how much does money, money will grow? You lead them to the answer. So what happens is when you ask questions, they listen here, you stay in the brain. Why? Now you're programming them. Question program people to remember. It seems like not. See, when you deliver a policy, how do you do it? Would you like your client to stick with that policy forever? Yeah. Never explain to them. Ask questions like you are closing. Ask questions. After 20 years, how much is your contribution? Zero. 
30 years, zero. You have to ask, what, what is your fund value? How much your bonus? You ask. Why? Because when someone comes to their house, oh, that's not, what, you have IRP? They is coming, you see that piece of thing? They is coming, you. <laughs> but because you educate them. Why is it educate is not for educate? Tell me if this is true, okay? Educate. You go to school, you learn. They teach you. But do you have exams? Why do you think there's an exam? And what's the exam? Mostly questions, is that right? So that way you remember what was taught. True? So the same thing doing this. The client have to remember what was taught by you. The only way they can remember that is if you ask them question and let them answer. Even you get them to the answer, because of the question, it stick in the mind. And then they see the answer. Really simple. The presentation is designed to be psychology for them to learn. Do not convince people. Convincing is the brain. But educating is the heart. I guess learning. Yes. You know, I, I'm trying to understand what really the difference of success and not so much success. And in the end, what I found out? This, God's gift. The same for everyone. The same. Those few people who use it effectively will become more successful than don't. Let me give you a very simple example. Who is the wealthiest person on earth? Elon Musk. How did it become the wealthiest today? Did they use the brain or did they use the heart? Wow. If it's the brain, he's supposed to be the one who invented the electric car. Did he, is he the one who invented the electric car? No. no. The owner, the original founder, have the brain. But the heart is missing. This is why. Because Elon Musk, for him, electric car is about saving the what? The planet. Environment, right? That's also the heart. But that's more than that. You have to look beyond that. Saving lives. Because if you have a bad planet, people will die. Is that right? Yeah. But it's not even that actually. It's about him that someday cars will talk by itself. So that way it avoid car accident. That's the long-term goal, is that someday that like, every car will connect its other, know exactly what they are. Hey, don't kiss me. <laughs> you know, you're too close. <laughs> I need my privacy. <laughs> so, but yeah, really that's the goal, is to save people's lives. It's not just about the environment, it's really about... So is that the brain or the heart? So you see the guys like, wow, it's so rich, it's so smart. Are you sure? It's the brain? If it's the brain, he don't have to, all those scientists and engineers. He just can't do it himself. True? But instead of that, he's not the smartest person. But he have the person who have the heart. Those engineers and scientists have the brain. But the difference with him is he has the heart. And what matters their better passion? Yes, to that. They solve problem. His problem. He is solving everyone's problem, like massively. So, like I said, don't, no secret, we're all the same. It's how effective you use God's gift. Are you guys learning? Yes. yes. See, hopefully after this, what you say, you'll be aware. What you look, you'll be aware. Be aware of what you say, what you, the way you look at people, you know, the opportunity in front of you. Be aware. Like, you look at the Mortons, this, this person, a cashier, you know, you fall in line, and it's like, you order something, okay, that's okay. But can you use your time effectively? You only have seconds to ask for the phone number. 
Is that right? You only have seconds. But the question is, do you see this person? Did you know the story of this person at, like at, over the counter? Uh, maybe they are like 30 something years old immigrant. How do you know that that person is not highly educated back home? But to come to Canada, they have to start with that type of job. How do you know? If you judge them right away because your brain, your eye judging them, well, you don't have the heart. You did not use the heart effectively. But if you see this person and you genuinely want to help them to improve their lives, that's the heart. Use it effectively. Not everyone will say yes. It's okay. But at least you keep doing your best to change people's life. Keep doing your best. And you all need this to do that. Did I say this is my best training ever? Yes. I meant it. Because I started this thing. I mean, just look at me. Didn't finish high school. Grade 11. The way is about how to become better, how to make a difference. It's like how we can change. You know, like not just immigrant beneficiary or whatever this country is. I love this country. It's amazing country. It's a beautiful country. That's not where we go when we come back. We are home. We are beneficiary of those who live before us. We are beneficiary of those, you know, like been here 50, 60 years, 100 years. We're pretty really shy of that. <coughs> We're living a very peaceful life. We have healthcare, education, very peaceful. We're pretty really shy. The question is, what can we contribute? What way can we give back to this country? You know, if you look at that, how you can make this be part of this, like make this country become better, that's the heart. You're just using it effectively. If you think that, Oh, when I retire, I'm going to have pension. That's the brain. I mean, I don't mind retiring, receiving pension from the government, but I'd rather not to. I'd rather give it to charity, to the government. When I really want to start doing what I do, like, I'm not going to collect all the income supplement, see people get donated to, or maybe take it, but donate it to church or something. Why? Because, I gave back, I contribute. And somehow, somehow, the more I give, the more happiness I receive. I'm just grateful. Well, one of the things about this piece of thing is like, you know, am I worried? I don't. I don't. I also have this minimum mindset. What is your minimum? My minimum is I have a happy wife, happy life, my kids are okay, they're healthy, you know, we can eat three times a day. We can pay our bills. Our kids are the same. They have a very good, you know, like career. They have a very good future. Uh, I'm happy. So everything else, we just want to give. We just want to give. You know, the heart. Now you can see if this is the effectively using the heart or the brain. I was uh, listening to <coughs> Forrester, and they talk about their whole life. And every time I see the number to me, it's like, I don't, I don't want mental black, but I become mental black. <laughs> it, it, it just that, it's just like, he believes on something, and that's okay. It's okay to believe on something, but hopefully you believe on something that is right. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is like, did he try something else? Did he see the numbers of UL to do it properly? Like, because I see that number, like, to me, it's like, it just doesn't make sense for some people it makes sense, but for most people it doesn't make sense, because I'm the client, that's how I think. But then, he started talking about Forrester something, like they're going to give to scholarship, they're going to have this thing, I was like, I was thinking, wow, that is good, but for you to convince me to sell something I don't believe in, because of this, in my opinion, it's not right. You are using the brain, and then you're trying to use the heart. But the brain is not right in the first place because the number doesn't make sense. And then you're gonna put the heart there so that way I can say yes to you. No, don't bribe me. I love working with everyone. But at the same time, I have my independence to think. So, but then listening to him is like, to me it's like, wow, we can do this. 
Why don't we be the one giving scholarship? Because we used to do that, my wife used to do that back home. Until Duterte became president and he said, every national college, university is now free. Like we used to have 125 students a year going to school, university, college. We stopped that, we moved to housing. We start giving houses. So, and I look at this like, why don't we do this? So after the meeting, I was like, I talked to Danny Kapper and my wife, I was like, hey, we can do that. Why don't we be the one giving scholarship? You know, because on their thing, it's like saying, they will give 2,000 a year scholarship. It's a partial, right? It's not the full 2,000. So that's okay. But the requirement is you must have this so many hours, volunteer hours in two years. And the reason like, you don't need that. As long as you have passion, you want to do something, that's okay. So he said, if we, if we can do that, why don't we do that? The first year we do 2,500, 2, so for four years is $10,000. Can that help my student? Yes. yes. So he said, why don't we, we're community anyway, we're family, why don't we do this gateway community? Why don't we have, you know, in about four years time, we're going to have 1,000 scholars. The first year, 250. Second year, 250. Third year, 250. The fourth year, 1,000. And then we are giving 2.5 million to scholarship every year. Is that the brain talking or the heart? The heart. Because it's okay to graduate here, but a lot of students need help. Would you agree? A lot. Maybe that can make a big difference. I don't know it will. So is it okay to do that in great way? We have great community and helping yes. you know, a member of our and who's the member of our community? Us, advisors and clients. But they don't like even if they only have CI, it's okay. They're part of the community. Because they have term test, it's okay, they're part of the community. Because we are a community, that's what we do. We have to take care of each other. And one of the things that I was thinking is like, wow, you know what's the most difficult when your advisor and your, you, you learn your client pass away within two years? You know what, how difficult is that? Tell me, do you know anyone who have that claim right away? No. If more than two years, sometimes that time is like two days, three days, they pay. Is that true? But two years within contestability, it could be like months. Three months to six months, nine months. Because in contest within two years, it's there's a lot of investigation. So I told them, what if we can have this, you know, a financial funeral assistance, or funeral financial assistance, what does it mean? If a member of our community die within two years of that policy, whatever the policy is, we will donate, not donate, but give financial assistance to the funeral company. Like we will pay the funeral company, not them. Because if we give them the money, that can create conflict of interest. Yeah. But if we pay for the funeral, at least $10,000, then it can if they have them and it doesn't create conflict because we pay them directly. Can we help the our community that way? Yes. You know how hard it is like you see this go upon me, go upon me. Yes. So simple thing like that. After two years to five years, we can give a financial assistance of five thousand dollars. About community. You have a community that you support? We can help. Just let us know how we can help. And we're already doing it to support our community. So we just want to make it like more like, you know, really a community that, ha that really helps. Why? We just want to give. We just want to give. We just want to make a difference in people's life. So look at the heart. Can you use it effectively? Holy moly, I only have 15 minutes. Are you still learning? Yes. Good morning. Wow, thank you very much for learning. But let's see how effective are you in front of a client, okay? Your illustration, how do you make them educate them? Like, how do you educate your client based on illustration? Get them involved. Hmm? Involved, interactive. Engage them. Engage. Involve them, interactive. You know, I like to intrigue people. On the retirement side, I typically will say this. So, let's say life is 
long, right? You retire, you become part of 76%. How much is your retirement income here? Remember, this is my rule. I used my mom effectively by asking questions, and I lead them to the answer of the screen. See, how old are you here? How much your income? This is the alternative, how much the income? So it's the same. Right? The same income, the same contribution, the same money, the same rate of return, same retirement income. But how much is your income here at the age of, let's say, 78? How much your income with alternative? Zero. Zero. When you become 78, how do you feel if you run out of income? How do you feel? Ask them the question, let them feel it. When you become 80, how much your income? How do you feel? You know, when we when we are that age, would you like to become a burden or a blessing to your family? A blessing. But if you have nothing, how can you be a blessing to them? But here, IRP, you still have income. And then we're all going to pass away, right? Age 90, imagine this. Let's say today, you receive a letter. Your grandma passed away a month ago, and you just found out today that your grandma gave you a, a million dollar inheritance today, this morning. Will that make a big difference in your life? Yes. You know what's about called? Financial legacy. Right? Your grandma is giving a financial legacy. Well, let's say what if you're age 90, that's when you pass away. How much your financial legacy on the alternative? Zero. How much on this IRP strategy? A lot of times, around 90 is around almost a million or more, right? So how would you like to give a financial legacy to your grandchildren someday? You can technically create the legacy now. How do you think they feel when they find out that you are giving them financial legacy? Can that make a big difference in their life? So ask the question, engage them, involve them. But of course, would you agree that this is like too good to be true? Because sometimes people are like, that's too good to be true. So would you like to know the secret? Why it can provide lifetime income and financial legacy? Why affluent Canadians like this, this IRP? Would you like to know the secret? Yes. When you ask the secret, what does trigger in the mind, their mind? Curiosity. They become curious. curious. Yeah. They want to know. So that's the time you're going to move to the loyalty reward. The bonus, right? Do you have product reward program? Like Costco card, aeroplane? Ask them. Oh, that's good. So how does it work? So when you're loyal, they give you a reward, right? Well, let's say in year 10, how much is your account value here? Remember, you ask a question, point the answer. And this one is what you call bonus interest. This is the loyal reward. If you're loyal, they give you a reward. This is the secret. How much they bonus? What do they do? It added to your fund value. In year 25, how much is your contribution? Zero. But how much is your bonus? You pinpoint. What it does do? It added to your and value. You know, rich people know something we don't know, would you agree? Yeah. Is it okay to learn from them? Yeah. That's the reason why you can provide the financial, uh, lifetime income and financial legacy. That's the secret. Mm -hmm. Their secret. How many people know that? Not many, right? That's supposed to be good enough, right? No. People like to be curious. 
Ask them another question. Would you like to know another secret? Why a fluent Canadian likes this fun? Now suddenly they're like, another secret? And now what do I meant about that? Of course you're willing to save this money. If it's 250 a month, how much is this? 3,000 in one year. So that's good. 3,000 in one year plus some interest. But what if you become part of the 24%? We don't know which one, would you agree? So always ask questions when you are presenting, when you're illustrating, when you're doing policy delivery. Because when you're asking questions, they are learning. That's why we say we educate. So ask a question. Just in case you become part of 24%, <coughs> you pass away after just one year. Which of this is better for your family? If you know the wife's name, if you know the children's name, better. Mention the name. This one million dollars or this three thousand something? Which one is better for them? What do you think they'll say? Always a million dollars. And then right away you ask. You post, actually you post a little bit and then you ask, why did you choose this million dollars? Remember, you're not there to serve. You are there to educate. Because when they understand, they decide. Please understand that, okay? When they understand, they decide. So do not confuse them with so many numbers, but you don't ask the right question. You don't use your mouth effectively. Yeah. They choose the million dollar because of the brain. That's the truth about it. They will always say it's a bigger amount. I don't know about you, but I've never really heard anyone say, because I love my children. Never heard about that. Yeah. It's just that, at that moment, they see it's a bigger number, right? Yeah. So, if someone is really philosophical saying, that is too much for, for her. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes maybe it happened, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's just tell them this, you know, but what, what if, what if this is you? What if your wife is going to pass away? Is it too much for you? You know, who's going to pay for the mortgage? Exactly. Who's going to pay for their, your kids' education? When that happens, you're only going to be one income, just you. Is that going to be enough? So, it's okay that sometimes you're going to have that objection or some people who have, uh, what do you call this? Uh, Sometimes people are sarcastic. 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 It's okay. Remember, you have to focus because you're not there to sell. You're there to change people's life. So do not try to win any argument. Don't. You can win the argument, but you lose the war. You go out, no application. So ask a question and you'll be surprised most of them say it's a bigger amount it's more money for them but then that's when you try to touch the heart talk from the heart effectively understand that that's good but would you agree the real reason you pick this amount because you love your family you love your children what do i mean you work hard right your income what does it do for your family it provides for what they need. Is that right? For the food, for the shelter, the schooling, it provides. But what if you become part of 24%? What happened to your income? It died with you. Would you agree? But how about your expenses? Stay with them. But can this pay the mortgage? Can this pay? Can this pay their for the education someday? The debt. So I wish that they don't call this life insurance. I would love to see it change to love insurance because really this is for your for your family because you love them. So 
be effective on that. And then another, how are you sure of this? Ask that question then. So eight years from now, probably she's gonna be in university, if you know if she's a girl, right? So eight years from now, the thing is this, we really don't know which one. What if the 24% become you? Which one is gonna help your kids for their education? This amount, a million dollar, or this amount, this is the balance of the investment? Ask that question, they always pick the big amount, right? Always. And then, what do you do? Would you agree this is enough for the education? Now look at real life. Let's talk real life. That's in case this happened in just now. And then your daughter, or even all your kids, they went to university. All went to university, they graduate. During graduation, who do they remember? Who did they remember? You. You're not there physically anymore, but you're still providing for your children education because you love them. You know, maybe you can say it's a technique. It's not a technique. It's just the way I've done this since the beginning. I just care about people. <coughs> like making money, anyone can make money. I can always go back to be a mid and make money. But what I have seen here, I mean, there's an advisor, there's a, a lady who went to the office just last year. And, and uh, she had me, she had my wife, she was crying, 30, 31 years old. Her husband also was a former advisor, very jolly, very happy. He was single when he, he became an advisor, went back home, married her high school girlfriend and then bring her here, then she had a baby, a girl, <coughs> and then suddenly, very young, early 30s, had, you know, colon cancer? Very young, early 30s. And it's very jolly, even, even if it's in the hospital, it's like, I see you guys in the convention. That's how jolly is, that's how happy it is. Pass away. The wife have a million dollar you know, that benefit. Is that love? Yes. Is that the brain talking or the heart talking? The yes. yeah, heart. He loves his family. He loves his wife. He loves his daughter. See, I look at this, and I was like, why some people are successful more than others. At the end of the day, we're all the same. God gave us a gift. Everyone has the same gift. It's just how effective you use the gift of God. You use effectively, then you can have a better result. If you use it, if you don't use it effectively, you're also gonna have the result, result that you don't like. Every time I ask this question, and then I will end to like, so you mean to say when you're there, you want to make sure you have peace of mind that you're going to have a lifetime income. And just in case something happened to you, you make sure that your love to your family will carry on. And I always say this, you know what? I am like you. First time I saw this, the same thing, and this is how I felt. This is the best for my family. It's also the best for me. But this is the challenge. I'm sorry, but not everyone can qualify. So that's the truth, not everyone can qualify, is that right? Yes. So what I learned when I was in the field is this. A piece of paper, we used to call it client information form, but now it's a KYC form. Don't give them a lot of pages, just the top pages will say name, phone number. Just slide it on the, door, on the <coughs> table. Just slide it. You know, I cannot guide, you can qualify. Slide it. Look, what they're gonna look at that. To see if you can qualify, really all we need is just your driver license. Just an ID, basic ID. Look at it, give them a pen. What you're gonna see is typically they're gonna read it, name, address, 
when they see the pen, they start filling up. So when they start filling up the pump, what does it mean? They are applying already. So you don't need to ask. This is the most ineffective way of using the mouth during the moment. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? That's ineffective. Don't use that. Assume that you did your part to educate them, and you did, and assume that they learn and they're willing to see if they can qualify. If you do it, if you are effective in using God's gift to you, you'd be surprised. It's not only you, but your children, grandchildren, the next generation will be much better. And that's why I'm always excited about life. It's amazing, amazing life. So hopefully, you learn something tonight. Yeah. Okay? Life always has a season. It's not summer all the time. Always anticipate the season. It's not summer forever. Yes, summer is going to be cold. But fall is not forever. And it's going to be winter. Enjoy the moment. It doesn't matter what outside, enjoy it. The way winter is beautiful. You know blizzard? I love blizzard. Every time when on the highway driving, like on the road driving, it's blizzard. I always like, wow, I'm inside the movie. <laughs> you know why I always say that when I'm driving? Because back home, when I was movie and there's like snow blizzard, right? It's just movie. But now I'm in the movie. So just try to see the good in everything. It's not dark forever. If you have a problem, it's not dark forever. It's always gonna be light. So, yes, we have some challenges. That's normal. God is just testing us. Are we ready for the next level of responsibility? Yes. And I think we are. So, try to see the good in everything, every people, every situation. So, do you think good? All the time. You say good? All the time. You think good? All the time. That is good? 